Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're continuing work on our low poly stylized cottage. Quickly going through a few more details such as the door and the chimney. Do check out the other playlists on my channel. You can also go to my website gabbit.co.uk which has all my free courses in order. Also if you like what I do then you can check out my new character course. It takes you right from nothing through to making a great game character. So here's where we got to last time and I'll be just quickly going through the other aspects that made up my cottage. The techniques are all very similar, so I'll run through them fairly quickly. So to do the door, it's just four wooden slats next to each other. So shift right click, shift A to add, mesh cube. Let's scale it down into position, zoom in with period key, scale in the Y, front view, G to grab, and scale in the Z. And there we've got a nice wooden plank. I'll scale it slightly in the X, and I'll go into edit mode, add two loop cuts, so control R, wheel up, two loop cuts and just rotate really slightly and maybe this way really slightly as well. That's great, one to front view again, into object mode, G to grab in the X, and I just move that across slightly. Shift D to duplicate, into edit mode, wireframe this time and let's just modify our shape really slightly, into object mode and move that back so they're just about touching. A few gaps is great, that will help the light spill through later on. I'll select both those, Shift D to duplicate in the X, move those across and I'll rotate around the Z axis 180 degrees so they're flipped over. Okay, back to solid mode and let's just select these all, scale in the X slightly and just sort of fit them in. Grab them back in the Y and we've got a great door there. I'll go back to front view, select one, Shift D to duplicate, R, 90 and then scale that down in the X. Shift D to duplicate and one at the bottom and then let's move these outwards and we got ourselves a door. Oh, quick door handle, shift right click, shift A to add, mesh icosphere. Icospheres are all nice and blocky like this and they're also low poly. If I press shift A to add and go mesh UV sphere, it's much higher poly than an icosphere. So an icosphere is great, let's scale that right down and there we got a doorknob. Zoom in on that and grab it out. Might be a bit big so scale down a touch. That's great. I had a lantern over the top of mine. And for that, I can grab this beam here, full stop to zoom in, shift D to duplicate in the Z, RZ90, so it sticks out like this. Just come around a bit and see how that's looking. Scale in the Y. And maybe just scale it down just a touch, about there. And shift D in the Z, RX45, minus, by the looks of things. And I'll make this one a bit smaller and just intersect the other one and that will work nicely. You can always rotate by the X if you need to or scale ZZ if you need to scale it up in the local Z axis. Okay, that's ready for the lantern to go on. We also need a chimney sticking out, so shift right click, just check the position of the cursor, maybe about here in fact, shift right click and shift data add and we will add a cylinder this time. We don't need it to be 32 vertices, I'll turn that down to about 16, let's have a look. In fact, 12 would be better. Now I'll scale it down. Full stop to zoom in and center around that object. Maybe make it a tiny bit bigger, rotate slightly. You might have to move a few roof tiles out the way. Okay, so with this selected, into edit mode and select the end face. So three to go to face mode. And let's start modeling this a bit more. So I to inset and E to extrude. And then we've got that sort of base bit there. And if we go to reverse front view or back view, control one that is, and I can actually hold down control and right click to extrude this outwards and give it this sort of wonky look. Okay, so that's about right, but it needs a bit of adjustment, I think. There's a couple of ways of doing this. I think I'm going to delete some edge loops. So press two on my keyboard to go to edge mode and select an edge loop and control X. Control X dissolves an edge loop. So alt left click and control X. Now that might seem a bit strange deleting the edge loops that I've already created, but I want to sort of show you ways of doing things. Now I can select these and then press Control B to bevel, and that will sort of create a rounded edge like that and give it some sort of smoothness to the curve. And that works quite well, I think. You don't have to have that. You can have a very harsh line if you like. Let's just zoom out a bit and have a look how that's fitting in. I think that's good. If you ever need to change anything, you can select the face loops so this one here, 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 and here. And I'm holding down Alt with an edge that's going across the face loop that I want. So let's select this one here as well. So Shift, Alt, and left click on one of these edges going down and you can see I can select face loops. Of course, I'm in 
face mode for that to happen. And I can press Alt S to scale by the normals so I can scale that in or out as I see fit. I quite like how it is, but I'm gonna press Alt S and just scale it in just a touch to about there. So Alt S to scale in the normals. Let's select that top face now and E to extrude and then S to scale. So it comes outwards, E to extrude up, E to extrude, S to scale inwards and just press G then Z to move that up and E to extrude and I want these all to join in the center. If I press scale zero, they'll all come into the center. But before I do that, I want to use the auto merge here. So if I press this now and press scale zero, they'll merge together in the center there and we'll have one vertex. So if I go to vertex mode and click on that, I've got one vertex at the end there, which is what I want. Okay, so there's a pipe. I'll model the lantern now. So shift right click around about here, shift A to add mesh and then cube. Let's zoom in on that and scale it down to the right size, into position, and let's think about the shape. Four sides is fine, but we want to elongate it slightly, so scale in the Z, and into edit mode, control R to do a loop cut around about there, and scale that up. So that's the shape I want. Maybe I'll come around to the bottom here, select faces, and scale in. Okay, I'll just quickly go back to object mode and just scale it till I'm happy. And let's zoom out and see how that's looking. That's about right. You might want to go in to edit mode and maybe into vertex mode and just move some of these around, give it a bit of variation and a bit of distortion. Now my lantern had a sort of inset with a glowing face inside, so we'll make the faces now. So three to go to face mode, select these different faces around the outside here. In fact, I can select face loops, can't I? So this one and this one. Alt left click on those edges going down or across the face loop. And now I want to inset these by pressing I. So I to inset. If I press I again for individual, I actually get the individual faces inset. And that's exactly what I want. E to extrude and scale in slightly. They're all going into the middle point. So I'll press Shift Z so they don't scale downwards. They will scale inwards very slightly though, but that's not a big problem. And that all looks fine. So tab out of edit mode. Shift right click and Shift A to add, and we'll add a cube in here. Scale it right down and scale in the Z. And that's our sort of connecting piece of metal or rope or whatever it is. That needs to come back a bit and this also needs to come back. So it's in the middle there. Okay, so a few items there. Lastly, I think this top of our chimney needs to be a bit better. So into edit mode, I'll select this face loop here with Alt left click and Control plus to increase the selection and then I'm going to scale it up slightly, G then Z to move it up slightly. Yes, I think that's much better now. And that's looking good. So keep me informed about how you're getting on. You can always get across to the Discord server and share your work there. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.